Christ. The seed is Christ, not people, it's Christ himself. So, in other words, this is a temporary addition, once a covenant and the Ten Commandments were a temporary addition to Abraham's covenant. Until when? Until the seed comes. Until Jesus comes. Alright? You see, God has a master, a perfect master plan. He knew that this old law of covenant would only be in power until such time that the seed comes. That's why the, the, the scripture says, not seeds, meaning many people. It says seed, meaning one person, that's Christ, added to the previous covenant. So it's saying God did not abolish Abraham's covenant. It didn't. It was an addition. It was on top of it. It means that God still loves them and will still bless them because this was his covenant. But the problem is they refused to believe that. Abraham believed, but they didn't. But they, instead they said it with much pride. Okay, we will do everything God said, you know. We will do everything he did. And we will obey everything. We will be obedient to whatever the Lord says. But in Deuteronomy 27, 2, it says, Cursed is anyone who does not uphold the words of his law by carrying them out. So they're in trouble. See, they agreed to something they would never be able to do in their lifetime. God never originally intended for us to live that way, see. He did it because he did it because of their unbelief, which is the bridge of the contract. And now that there is an added law to Abraham's covenant, you know, they are cursed because God knows they will never be able to, to obey anymore. You know, that's the problem with the law. You know, you're blessed. If you obey, you're blessed for your obedience and you're going to be punished or cursed if you disobey. And we know that no one could obey the law. Oh. Now, to understand it further, I just want to tell you the characteristic of a covenant. One of the characteristics of a covenant is that it cannot be withdrawn from by either party that entered the covenant. And since a covenant is a lifelong contract, you know, it's forever. But if you die, you're released, obviously. So one of the parties that literally has to die for the contract to end. And since Israel, Israel was never able to get the side of the bargain of the covenant, and remain, they couldn't remain 100% obedient to all the stipulations of the contract, they were in breach. Okay? You with me? They were in breach. However, God has still to keep his side of the covenant. He still has to punish those people for disobedience. So, if you are interested to see all those lists of punishment for being disobedient, I suggest you read Deuteronomy 28 and you see a list that's a lot of lists. See, if God hadn't punished the Israelites for their sins, God would have been in breach of the covenant. And that would make him a liar. Not fulfilling his promise. So, for it to end, God would have to die. You know? But we know God is indestructible. He cannot die to end his contract. So, there's a problem there. He can't bring himself to die just to end the contract, to stop the punishment. 
So do you remember what the seed is? I mentioned earlier, it was added because of transgression until the seed come. So what happened? The greatest act happened. He had the spirit conceived through a human being. And the man, Jesus Christ, was born into this world. And we know Jesus lived 100% perfect, obedient life, sinless perfection. Then what? Then he died. And that ended the punishment for these regions. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the covenant without breach. Thereby fulfilling all the requirements of the old covenant law, putting an end to it. Wow. This brings us to the last covenant, which is what we call the new covenant. He took the punishment of the sin on the cross. The new covenant, this is the most amazing, you know, and the ultimate covenant of all the which under we now live. See, this covenant was not made with a man. This covenant was made within the Trinity without any human intervention at all but purely out of God's heart and, you know, God's heart and His love towards people. In Colossians 2, 14, let's have a look. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, that was the law, which was contrary to us, and He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. And it was 8.13, if we have it that place. In that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now, what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish anyway. See, the whole law is valid until the purpose is accomplished in Christ. Now that Jesus' work is complete, the law of Moses is abolished, and we are now under the law of Christ. Just as Pastor Gandhi said earlier, the law of Christ is all about love. You know, that's the acid test. Love God and love your neighbor is guided by the Holy Spirit. See, it is required we are making covenant. It has to be sealed with blood. It was done in the during Abraham's covenant. It was done during Moses' covenant. <coughs> And in the new covenant, it was Jesus' blood. The full and perfect and final sacrifice. The only blood that covered the sin of the world. The complete payment for the past, present, and future sin of mankind. Now, what, let, let's go back to verse 33 of the main text. Jeremiah. <laughs> Verse 33. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Okay. What is, is this a new law that he was talking about? What is this new law that says it is now in our minds and written on our hearts? Anyone? Uh, Pastor Ryan wrote from Hong Kong, it says, any true believer will admit that if they had a choice to push a button that would allow them to never sin again, they would push that button in an instant. They would do it straight away. You know? If you're given a choice not to sin. You know what? It's not what. What is that law that is now in our hearts and our minds? It's not what. It's actually who. That is Jesus. See, the Lord has put Jesus in our minds yeah. and now written in our hearts. 
That, that's why you now want to study the Word of God. You know, that's why you now have the desire to listen and yes. to fellowship with Him. Yes, sure. And that is why you now have the joy of serving Him and worshiping Him. Amen. Because that is Jesus, yeah. who is far more superior than any other covenant covenant for the He is a better Adam, He is a better Noah, He is a better Abraham, better Moses, and better David.
stand up. And we've been praying. And we're still, and we're still bound. Amen. 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 Amen.